Only fans, only fans, only fans. Chat out today on the John Campy Show podcast. I hope you guys knew that tune. Uh, X Men 97, the first reactions are out and they are stellar. Speaking of first reviews, the new Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt film, The Fall Guy. North of 90% right now. It's tracking really, really well. Also, there's a report coming out that says uh, Bob Iger ain't so keen on having an Ant-Man 4 or a Captain Marvel 3. And Eternals 2 might even be in question. We're going to discuss that. Patty Jenkins, remember she was supposed to do that Rogue Squadron movie? Well, apparently it's back on. It's back in development and speaking of X-Men 97, uh, reports are going around that are suggesting that the creator and showrunner of X-Men 97, who was just summarily fired just before the debut of the show, they're saying it might have been because he had an OnlyFans account. We're going to talk about this and a whole bunch more. The John Campy Show podcast starts right now. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, the John Campy Show podcast, coming to you from right here in our quaint little studio. I'm, of course, your host, John Campia, and it is an awesome honor and privilege, as it is every day to have you, our international OnlyFans fans, to gather around and talk about our favorite things in the world, movies and movie news, TV and streaming and OnlyFans and all sorts of good stuff, not just giving our opinions, but giving you some information and context and maybe even some D picks so we can, you know, have great movie opinions. I don't know. I have lots of today. I'm joined by Ray Aura. Who are you speaking for? I hope you're just speaking for yourself. Jonathan Boy goes here. Sorry, I was busy uploading something, something, <laughs> something. And most importantly, you guys are here. Thank you so much for being here, making this little show part of your day. And here's how today's show is going to go. We're going to start off by talking about those topics that I listed off. And then in the second part of the show, we're going to take your live comments and questions. So if you've got a live comment, question, thought, opinion, observation, go ahead and use the Super Chat feature in the live chat and send it in. And we will talk about those as long as they're appropriate. Appropriate, guys. Appropriate. No OnlyFans stuff uh, for us to discuss here on today's show. Uh, you might notice that it's just Jonathan Ray and me here today. We were supposed to do a show today. Uh, we were going to have Rob and Chris on the show today. We're going to yeah. they were going to do it remotely, but I don't know if any of you seen the news. We're apparently having a typhoon in uh, the Los Angeles area with massive gusting yeah. winds that is knocking out people's internet and power. So they couldn't join us today, but don't worry about it. They'll be joining us tomorrow. Uh for now it's just you and us talking about intimate details mm -hmm. of our fandom so without any further ado guys let's get into it shall we x-men 97 Woo. Uh, we'll talk about the creator and all that kind of stuff later but as for now you'd be forgiven if you forgot that in the midst of all the controversy going on there's a show coming out the continuation of the old classic X-Men animated series, which I loved, by the way, is upon us and is about to release. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to pretend that I'm completely excited. I, yeah, I did love the old cartoon, but this seems like a weird gimmick to me, returning it. So I'm not against it, but I, you guys who've been watching me for any period of time know I'm not exactly excited about it. Well, they just had a debut event for it where they showed the first three episodes to a bunch of people. And the reaction is pretty outstanding. Um, this is coming to us from comic book movies who just posted some of the reactions from people who just saw the first three episodes. And we're going to go over some of them here. Uh, Jamie wrote, uh, the first three episodes of X-Men 97 are absolutely epic. Exceeds expectations in every way. The nostalgia is strong, but it's so much more. Beautiful animation, excellent storytelling, and above all, my favorite thing about the X-Men, the drama. Uh, Aaron writes, X-Men is absolutely astounding. I'm floored by how much uh, love this show has for the entire idea of the X-Men. I could not be happier. Uh, POC wrote, I got to see three episodes of X-Men 97, and it is nostalgia handled perfectly. The action and use of powers are awesome and creative. It's pleasantly hilarious and surprisingly sexy uh this is this is a show for both og and new fans the x-men are back uh then we got uh tessa who writes to me my x-men to have this series back has overwhelmed me with emotion i've seen the first three episodes and each one brought me to tears Ooh. so many characters and storylines done perfectly i love having this team back for those nervous don't be this show is incredible 
Our own Greg Alba, our friend, wrote in, uh, after re-watching the original X-Men animated series and now the first couple of episodes of X-Men 97, I can honestly say the series is fantastic. It's how you remember preserving the characters and themes, yet evolved with more cinematic touch and beautiful action sequences. Uh, Russ wrote, I just saw the first three episodes of X-Men 97, and I can confidently say that fans of the original X-Men animated series will be very happy with it. I also really enjoyed the updated animation animation style it'll be great to have the x-men back in the spotlight so i don't know maybe i was being overly pessimistic again the stuff i've seen the trailer i thought was okay i thought the trailer was all right a lot of people lost their minds over it. i know chris absolutely adored the trailer when it dropped and I, I thought it was definitely pretty okay pretty good but even that didn't get me excited for it but hearing like people raving about it including some people we know like greg saying that they absolutely crushed it and they nailed it maybe just maybe <laughs> uh this thing might be worth watching like I, ray do you got any interest did you first of all i don't even know did you even watch the original cartoon series? yes i did i'm i'm, I'm sorry i'm just getting uh messages right now that a power pole just fell on our street uh, so and now the your internet is out. out at the house so, oh my yeah. a powerful just, hopefully we aren't next I yeah mean, yeah you know, so um, but there. yes i did watch it but the problem i had was it felt like every time i turned it on it was that three-parter with morph morph you know oh, that one yeah 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 and i i absolutely hate <laughs> that arc <laughs> till this day i get nightmares that i'm gonna turn this on and morph is gonna appear I'm, I'm really excited only because i loved gambit in the show he was like my every time he yeah. appeared gambit i thought he was so cool when i was a kid i was just like so slick you know didn't worry about the uh back and forth between wolverine and uh cyclops it was just gambit just coming in taking care of business i actually really liked um uh, Jubilee too. I oh yeah, yeah. Jubilee everybody loves great. Um, and that's it. It was it was my whole my whole Saturday mornings for a while. It was that. I don't know what came on before. I usually remember stuff before and after. But yeah, um, I'm I'm totally excited, man. Uh, did you ever watch it, Jonathan? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, like X Men '97, and before that, it was Batman the Animated Series. Um, and then I kind of fell off with Batman the Animated Series. I mean, by by the time this came out, um, I was like, I was in high school, was sort of, sort of like moving away from this kind of stuff. But it still, it still got my attention every week. Uh, I, I love this look, the whole Jim Lee look. You know, the only thing I didn't yeah. like about the Gambit character was that Cajun accent. Yeah. Like yeah. he spoke with such an exaggerated Cajun accent. I didn't. By the way, you mentioned Jubilee, uh -huh. a character that was so prominent in the cartoons and never got a lot of love at all, except for a quick cameo appearance in the thing. Uh, you know, my wife, Anne, your sister, mm -hmm. uh, has done a lot of cosplay. One of my favorite of hers is Jubilee. That's <laughs> Anne's Jubilee. Oh, right, right. I love Anne's and you know Jubilee. What? Storm wasn't that bad in the series, too. She, oh, no, I, yeah, I, I oh, liked yeah. Storm in the series. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally did. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What did you think about these reactions that we're getting from X-Men 97? Were you really excited for the show already? Were you like me, where you've been like, eh, I could give her, leave, take it or leave it? I don't know. What do you think about what we're hearing? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comments section below and leave your thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to this, shall we? It was kind of with a little bit of surprise at last year's CinemaCon in Las Vegas when Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling came out to talk about their new film, Fall Guy. That's something that had completely been off my radar up until that point, but they showed us a little sizzle for it, and I thought it looked pretty cool. The trailers have come out, and they've looked pretty good. I've liked the trailers. I think they look like they've been pretty solid. But I, I will admit I'm not expecting much out of it, right? If, if it can just be a fun little film to enjoy with the, all the charm and personality of an Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling, good on you. Well, the film just did a little bit of a premiere debut, and the first reviews are coming out for it, and they're pretty fantastic. As a matter of fact, right now, if we go over to Rotten Tomatoes, at this moment, granted, it's only 24 reviews, but it's for some of the more major outlets, mm -hmm. it's got a 92%. 
Uh, some of the reviews reading stuff like this as I scroll down here and keep scrolling and keep scrolling. There we go. Uh, we got things like uh, Deadline, Hollywood Daily writes, uh, The Fall Guy stands as a hilarious and thoughtful tribute to the stunt community, blending action with the poignant exploration of the sacrifices made by these unsung heroes. Uh, RogerDebert.com wrote, This is a ridiculously fun movie, anchored by a movie star in a part that fits in perfectly and a director who really has been working towards this film for his entire career. Because remember, it's being directed by one of the John Wick directors who started and spent most of his career as a stunt coordinator. Mm -hmm. So he has a total, total love for the stunt community. Uh, the AV Club wrote, uh, a blast of fun at the movies, worthy of the biggest tub of popcorn you can find. It's two hours of movie stars being absolute charm machines. And sometimes that's all you really need. Uh, Rolling Stone wrote, the fall guy feels indistinguishable from the dozens of other action films and then Gosling and Blunt start flirting and fighting and verbally fainting with each other, and you feel like you're floating an inch above your seat. That's the kind of stuff that I really like reading, <laughs> uh, is there. The Hollywood Reporter says, the rare big-budget studio film that actually feels human. Um, it, it, like, it's on and on. It's just, sound like again, none of these sound like they're saying, warm up their seats at the Oscars next year. Right. None of them are saying this is the movie of a generation, but it's saying exactly what I want to hear about this movie, that it's a load of fun, that the charm between Gosling and Blunt is on point, that it's paying homage to the stunt men and women who make the Hollywood action films what they are. And by the way, did you guys see that Universal released, I, I believe it's Universal, released uh, this little sizzle about them doing the car flip scene that they set a new record for a number of rotations in, in some car stunt and all that kind of stuff. No, I didn't. So oh, they're, they're really taking their stunt serious in this. Oh, they're taking it deadly yeah. serious so, because it's being done by stunt yeah, guy, right? So it's going to be great action, but then it's got that like rom-com feel, like... But not quite rom-com, but just more like that that charm that these two have. Yeah, now if you... And if you can properly marry those two types of elements together, yeah. you can be in for a hell of a fun time. Now, I'm not going to see it until the first or second week of April. They're going to show us this film in its entirety at CinemaCon coming up, which is about a week or two before it gets released in theaters. So I can't wait to watch it now and then tell you guys what I think. So hearing this stuff from these people is taking me from going from being really interested in watching this film to legitimately being like straight up excited to see I, it. I had good feelings about this movie as soon as we saw the poster because the poster's they great. took great care for this poster. And we had just been talking on the show when it dropped, like the day or the day before it dropped, about movie posters not just doing that human pyramid thing and 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 telling a story within one image. And it really did that. I, I've been excited ever since. I, I think they, they're only going to release this poster. I've been searching for more, more, more posters posters every day but i'm glad you brought up the oscars first of all i wasn't interested in this film at all like it's just i know not, we, yeah, it's we just not my type that. of genre the the film what this film has going for me is i've been slowly warming up to ryan gosling like a lot more and more yeah, i'm becoming a, up to him. A, a, a big fan of his but at the oscars their little banter on stage which is oh, why the emily blunt yeah yeah i yeah, think yeah that, that was great was, that got me interested in seeing this and it, it Brings up the point, like I was thinking about, you know how we always bring up promotion, movie promotions at the Oscars, whatever. Yes. They should do more promote. I, part of me doesn't believe in that, but this worked for me. What they did, now I'm interested because I want to see that on screen, play it on screen. So, so good on them for. Uh, it might have been by chance that they got up together or they put them up together. No, no, it wasn't by chance because they did, like, if you if you look back at the Oscars that we just had, by the way, it was a fantastic, the first time I can remember in forever that I thought it was a fantastic Oscars because I'm usually pretty critical of it, but I they did a great job. But there were a number of times that the two presenters coming up were people who were going to oh, be in an right. upcoming movie together. But I thought what the Oscars should have done, they never mentioned it. They're now coming uh, from this year's Academy Award nominated Barbie, Ryan Gosling, and Academy Award nominated film Oppenheimer, Emily Blunt. Like they never said, and appearing right. the upcoming Fall Guy. I think they should have done that when See, they had people coming up in the that's same That's where movie. I dis disagree. Maybe have new trailers in the commercials, but the Oscars is just to take a step back, I feel take like, a deep breath, yes. appreciate what we did, 
in this past year. Yeah. And then we can move on the next day or during commercial. I almost like, feel like they have a mandate of not being forward looking right. in the year of films. Yeah, yeah and I like think video they need game to awards. change that because, look, I don't want them to go as far as the game awards. Yeah, yeah. Let's which not do trailers. All the, yeah. game, the game awards aren't even the game awards anymore. They're just the trailers <laughs> for upcoming game show. That's all it is. Hurry There's up a and couple talk. of awards here and there. Hurry right? up and give your speech. But there is something to the idea of using this biggest day of the movie and we're getting off topic yeah yeah but no, 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 but it works, this, it worked for but this taking movie. this day that is the biggest day of the movies to not only celebrate what was but maybe 10 percent of it to look forward to what's coming I, I i think there's don't become the game awards but take a little bit of, of what the game awards does <laughs> yeah. but it's funny with all the trailers and all the marketing that dropped it's the Oscar thing that got me interested in this movie. That's and I know I'm the one Ryan of Gosling a billion, and Emily Blunt. I, yeah, thing. I'm a one of a billion people. I know that, but maybe there's other people that that it hit that way too. I don't know. Well, all I know is that I was really interested in this film because of the trailers and everything, and seeing the reactions coming from a lot of the major outlets who can be kind of jaded. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very very exciting to see. By the way, Tor just keeps. Donating ch uh, channel memberships to people. Thanks for that, Tor. Oh, yeah. More emojis. <laughs> More emojis for Ray to make. All right, guys. Time to make Question the is for you. What do you think about this? Have you been looking forward to the fall guy? Maybe it's not your cup of tea. Maybe you're a diehard Emily Blunt, Ryan Gosling fan. You've been excited about it. Do these reviews that we see coming out right now move the needle for you either way at all? Jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to this, shall we? Oh, what it means to be a fan of Marvel these days. Uh, you Marvel know, fans. listen, I am a <laughs> I am a solid, solid Marvel fan. I have been for many years, but you know, hey, the last couple of years have not exactly been their finest work. We gotta get you that Marvel fans hat. <laughs> yeah, I need to get the Marvel <laughs> fans hat. But I mean, and again, I know there's some people who think I'm just overly negative on Marvel right now. But again, whether you love Marvel before or hate Marvel or whatever, I think most of us can agree. I've said this before. I think most of us can agree that whether you love Marvel, hate Marvel, whatever, we agree that in the last year or two, it has not been their best work, mm -hmm. right? We can, we can agree on that, right? Like yep. they've had a couple of things that they've knocked out of the park. But they've had more things than we're used to that have not been knocked out of the park. And I, so I think we can all at least agree on that. Well, of course, Bob Iger has come out and said, once he came back and took over the reins of Disney again, that they have oversaturated things, that they're going to start cutting back a little bit. And apparently, according to reports, that includes some franchises that Bob Iger thinks it's time to put to bed, including... According to this report here, movies like Ant-Man 4 and Captain Marvel 3, according to some online reports, are saying that those are now done. Not that there were any solid plans to do an Ant-Man 4 or a Captain Marvel 3, but the reports are saying those are done. Bob Iger is saying, look, those are just too questionable that they can actually make any money at this point due to the last results we had. Those are done. And then even a film like Eternals 2, according to the report, which Kevin Feige is very committed to doing, Apparently, he and Bob Iger are having some disagreements because Bob Iger is not so sure they should do an Eternals 2. Kevin Feige completely wants to do an Eternals 2. So according to the reports, while Ant-Man 4 and Captain Marvel 3 are just gone, they're off the board, they're saying Eternals 2 may be on hold at the minute, at the moment, while Kevin Feige and Bob Iger try to work out whether or not to do that one in general. Now, these reports are consistent with some comments that Bob Iger made recently that we talked about on this show. Remember, Bob Iger said, listen, it it's horrible when as a film studio you need to cancel projects at various points in their process of production. Mm -hmm. Some in the planning, some in production, some already done. He goes, that's, that's a terrible thing, but you have to do what's right for the business. And Bob Iger said, we've actually very quietly killed a couple of projects that we haven't announced, that we haven't talked about yet. And not that they're projects you haven't talked about, but that we haven't talked about canceling these things. We, we've canceled some things that we haven't announced that we canceled yet. And having something like this come out saying like an Ant-Man 4 off the board, Captain Marvel 3 off the board, 
and even some debate now going on about Eternals 2, that goes right in line with what Bob Iger was saying. And listen, you never like to hear projects being canceled, right? At whatever stage of development, whether they're done production like Acme versus Coyote, or whether they're halfway through production or whether they're still on the drawing board. But the reality is when Bob Iger said that they have been oversaturating themselves, he was right. When he was saying that the quality has kind of taken second place to quantity, he's right. With the whole overall kind of feeling that we need to kind of hone in our efforts on the projects that we are making, not spread ourselves so thin and make sure we have our best people working on our stuff and not bringing in people to work on projects we otherwise wouldn't have worked with, but we need them because we're doing all these extra projects. He's right. And listen, I am a big fan of the Ant-Man fan uh, of the Ant-Man uh, uh, franchise. franchise. I love Ant-Man one. Mm. Love it. Love it. Love it. What Peyton Reed did with that film. I think mwah, chef's kiss. I was really entertained by Ant-Man two. I didn't like it as much as Ant-Man one, but I was really entertained by it. Woo. Ant-Man three. Not, not so good. Not so good at all. But it, I don't say that they should be canceling or not be looking at Ant-Man 4 just because I didn't like Ant-Man 3, but it's because you've kind of done what you can do with Ant-Man, at least in his own projects. Like, I can still see Ant-Man as a very valuable um, ensemble character, like he was in Infinity War and Endgame and, and uh, Civil War. I could still totally see him as a very active player in the universe, but as far as him carrying his own films, maybe it's not there. I really enjoyed, I, I think Captain Marvel, the first one, was a mid-Marvel uh, film, so kind of in the middle, not on the bottom half of them, not on the top, but kind of right there in the middle. I enjoyed it. It was good for what it was. I, I even liked, barely, but I liked the Marvels. I, I didn't think it was a bad film, but I don't think you need to make movies about Captain Marvel. I think you can have Captain Marvel as a key player in the universe, but I don't think, and I think the box office numbers prove it, you don't do more of those. I do think they should do Eternals too. And I hope Bob Iger will listen to Kevin Feige on this because even though the first Eternals was did not exactly blow up the box office, I thought it was a very outside of the box for a Marvel movie. It was a very different feeling Marvel movie. I think you introduced some really cool mythology and some very interesting characters. I would like to see them do a second one. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But again, this is just a part of this overall train they're on right now of saying, we're going to start cutting back on the amount of stuff that we do. And he's right to do so. It was like a overhaul, the overhaul. Yeah. They called it. I mean, um, obviously Bob Iger is just looking at the numbers, right? He's he's saying, uh, and he doesn't want to gamble on a spending money on another shot. You know, the film sh should have made them money, and it didn't. So uh, I understand where Iger is coming from. The Eternals thing, I liked Eternals too. I, I did like it. But Rob loved it. Like, you know Rob what? loved Eternals. But how expensive was that cast, maybe, for Well, oh, it them? couldn't have been a cheap cast. Yeah, I mean so it's kind of like... I kind of see both sides. I do want certain things. I, I would love to see a Marvels too. I, I like those characters. I mean, I like their camaraderie. I just, I just don't know if it makes sense for Bob Iger, which it doesn't. See, because so. I think if you're Bob Iger and you're talking to Kevin Feige, like Bob Iger is not risk adverse, but you got to be smart about which risks you take. And I get the feeling that what Bob Iger would rather do is like, let's take risks on things we haven't tried yet, mm -hmm. like Blade, right? Like Shang-Chi was, rather than continuing to take risks on things that we are not getting good returns on. Captain Marvel, Ant-Man 4, you know, let's, if we're gonna take risks, let take, let's take risks on things that have potential big upside. Like mm -hmm. when we rolled the dice on Guardians of the Galaxy, which were characters nobody had ever heard of, mm -hmm. and we scored, we've made billions off of those movies. Let's take risks on new characters like Shang-Chi, which was like, I think one of the best movies Marvel's done. Where does Thunderbolts fall into that? Ooh. Because it is returning characters, but from TV series, it'll Not be interesting though. to no, see. No, a lot, like Winter Not Soldier all. is, yeah, right, right. Bucky is definitely oh. a movie. Yelena is Walker, definitely from the Johnny movie. Walker. Yeah. Walker's name? from TV. Yeah. 
fun. But, I love um, that too. Now. Then you have Ghost, who's from the movies. You have, I mean, most of the you have uh, Red uh, uh, Red Guardian, who's from the movies. Harrison Ford's first Harrison appearance. Harrison Ford will be his MCU? first appearance. So it'll be interesting to see those numbers. I mean, there was, you know, it's funny you bring up Thunderbolts because recently there had been some whispers that some people thought that they were just going to scrap Thunderbolts, and then just this last week they started production. I, I think it was just this last week they started. At, at any rate, so that de- Thunderbolts is definitely happening at this point because uh, I think they were just considered too far along the way. But I know that was one of the ones that was in I question. Keep, I'm I, really glad they're doing it. Though. I, I'm looking I, forward to it. I keep thinking about that cast, and I'm getting more and more the excited. The cast is so good. Just Wyatt Russell and Florence Pugh and uh, David Harbour. Oh, all yeah. All their banter with each other in their characters. Oh, my God. This might end up being yeah. the sleeper. If, if this the thing, sleeper. If this thing has a Guardians-esque, yeah, exactly. I'm not saying be James Gunn, but it has a Guardians-esque like, wit and charm to it, and then the action pieces the set pieces are like really fun who's directing this thing's gonna be great like like here's the thing i was notoriously down on the idea of thunderbolts and then they showed the lineup of who was in it and i was like okay so we kind of figured florence Pugh would be in there and that was that was good but when i saw that they put red guardian in there which who was the only really great thing about that black widow movie I'm like, I've been dying to see David Harbour as Red Guardian back again. And you're going to have Bucky. Wyatt. And you got Walmart Captain America. Come on, he's no longer Walmart. Hey, you know what? I love He Monarch is guy. still Walmart Captain America, and I love him for it. Because <laughs> I hated him at first, but as that show progressed, I'm like, you know what? I'm really into him as Walmart Captain America now. Uh, so, and what did he end up? He ended as an American agent, right? U.S. Right. agent. U.S. US agent. agent. And... And then I just saw this collection, and of course, then they they brought Elaine in. Yeah. Um, so the and, director is Jake Schreier. Shre- Shre- yeah, I honestly couldn't remember who was directing it, but you know what? I got excited about it, and I hope it keeps going. But it sounds like Bob Iger is just following through on what he said he would do, and I just hope. While I do want him to 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 cut back. I really hope that he listens to Kevin Feige and that they do in Eternals too. I, I I don't think Eternals was one of the top five best Marvel films or anything like that, but I thought it not only was it really good, I thought it represented a different dimension of the MCU that I think they need to explore more. So anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? According to these reports, like an Ant-Man 4 is now off the board. Another Captain Marvel standalone movie, off the board. Eternals 2, still on the board, but on hold. I don't know. Do you like these moves? Do you question these moves? Is this a good overall philosophy and direction they're going in? Are they riding the ship? Or are they making things worse? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. Listen, we still got to talk about Star Wars Rogue Squadron apparently being back on the table. And did Disney fire the X-Men 97 creator and showrunner because he has an OnlyFans account? Anyway, we're going to discuss that and a few things more. But before we do, we're going to take a quick second and thank one of the sponsors of today's episode of the John Campus Show podcast, our friends at Miracle Made. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Miracle Made. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so that you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. When they arrived at our house, my wife Anne loved to feel them so much, she couldn't even wait for me to get home to put them on our bed. Miracle Made has self cleaning. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent Prevents up to 99.7 of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. Miracle sheets also have incredible comfort and quality. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five star hotels. So go to Try Miracle, that's T R Y M I R A C L E dot com slash Campia to try Miracle Made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, one. If you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code 
Campia at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you will get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Campia and use the code Campia to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Campia to treat yourself. And thank you to our friends at Miracle Made for sponsoring today's episode of the John Campia Show podcast. All right, guys, with that down, let's move on to this, shall we? Let's not pull punches here. Lucasfilm has been a bloody mess for a couple of years. I mean, uh, just an absolute bloody mess. I mean, yes, they've hit some out of the park. They've, they've had wins, absolutely. Andor is the best thing Star Wars has ever done since the original trilogy. Um, they've had uh, some successes here and there. I mean, they just put out even, you know, say what you will about the sequel trilogy, every single one of them made over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And the first one, The uh, Force Awakens, still stands as the number one all-time box office yeah. movie domestically. No film has ever made as much money in North America as The Force Awakens, and I don't know that any film ever will. Um, so they, listen, they've had some successes. They absolutely had, and, and a few others here and there. But they've also had a long list of directors leave and writers leave and filmmakers changing and movies getting you know retooled and then all these movies getting announced and then going away. Where's this Kevin Feige Star Wars movie they talked about for years? Where's this Taika Waititi Star Wars movie they talked about for years? Where's this movie and that movie? Oh, and by the way, where's that Patty Jenkins Rogue Squadron movie that they made this big announcement with on, you know, on an airfield with a giant life-size X-Wing, and they made this big deal about it. This was, this was an amazing announcement video because when Patty Jenkins was in there talking about, you know, her, I think it was her father flying in the Air Force, and she's always wanted to make this dogfight movie and stuff like that. The whole idea was great, and then poof, gone, disappeared. That was well, the saddest day ever for me. Yeah, it was a very <laughs> sad day. Well, apparently... This movie might be back on, at least according to Patty Jenkins herself. IGN writes the following. It says, the Wonder Woman director shared the update in an interview with the Talking Pictures podcast. It's a surprising update for those who thought the fighter pilot focused spinoff would never land, but Jenkins says she is at least back writing a draft now that her schedule's opened up. Patty Jenkins said, when I left Star Wars to do Wonder Woman 3 and I started working on that, we talked about, well, maybe I'll come back to Star Wars after Wonder Woman 3. So we started a deal for that to happen, she said. When Wonder Woman 3 then went away, Lucasfilm and I were like, oh, we've got to finish this deal. And we finished the deal right as the strike was beginning. So now I owe a draft of Star Wars. So according to Patty Jenkins, just before the writer's strike happened, her and Lucasfilm got back together and completed a deal for her to do Rogue One. Then, of course, the strikes happened. Nothing could happen. And she's now saying, hey, I'm still doing it, and I am working on it, and I owe them a draft. I got to turn in a draft to them. As with anything Star Wars related right now, if any piece of Star Wars news that comes out, I am not going to get my hopes up. <laughs> That being said, I would, this is one Star Wars project I would love to see come to fruition. Because think what you want and cry all you want about Wonder Woman 84. I hated the movie too. I hated Wonder Woman 84. Patty Jenkins is the one who directed Charlize Theron to winning her Academy Award. Patty Jenkins is the one who shepherded and made the first Wonder Woman the first big legit hit for the DCEU. She is a terrific director. I'm not going to say that she's Christopher Nolan or Denis Villeneuve or anything like that. Of course not. But she's a terrific director. And when she spoke about Rogue Squadron and her family connection to the Air Force and the passion she has for wanting to do something like this and the whole idea. Because you know what? One thing... Even amidst a lot of the stuff that I like, the one criticism you can say about Star Wars is that there happens to be a particularly lack of Star Wars mm -hmm. yeah. uh, going on in it. A lot of it is, is in the sand. 
and stuff like that. I've been saying that a long yep. time, man. It'd be great. Like, it would be great to get back to that thing. You know, I, I hate the prequels, but there's certain things in the prequels that I really love. Obviously, I always talk about the Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, uh, Darth Maul lightsaber fight, the pod races. But one of the things, one of the scenes that I love in the prequels, I believe it's the opening scene. For, I, I can't remember if it's Attack of the Clones or if it's the third film. I think it's Attack of the Clones where the movie just opens up. Guys in live chat, help me out. Where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, or sorry, Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin are involved in this huge space battle above Coruscant. That's the third one. It's the third one? That's the beginning of the third yeah, one? Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. They're in this big, big space battle above Coruscant, and it, it gets. it's not as good as the space battle in Return of the Jedi, but it's fabulous and looks awesome. Rogue One, when they're attacking the planet, when the rebels show up to attack the planet, you got all the battles. See, I love Andor. Best Star Wars thing we've had since the original trilogy. But I yearn for some more wars amongst the stars. You know Top I mean? Gun Maverick, baby. Top Gun Maverick in a Star Wars universe. You said you haven't been to a 4DX. If this movie comes out, this will probably, I will force it. This will be your force, <laughs> first 4DX movie. I, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I but go. I hear, I hear the plot of Rogue Squadron is they they have an accident and the the X wings crash on Tatooine. Oh, and they the have whole to thing survive is the, the whole desert. Water and surviving oh. on the desert. Yeah, they have to survive the, the trials survive of the desert. Off, uh, spice. Yeah, they survive on spice while while eluding these giant worms. No, I've been. I I <laughs> sign me up. I love every time we see Star Wars in space. We see the stars. We see the them Tie Fighters. Uh, X wings. That's why I love going at dog Rogue fighting. One. Just just having the big, sh uh, what do they call the 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 big ships that they land the on the capital class ships. ships. Yeah, just seeing them, it, just everything going on there. Like there's a life outside of the planets. Like going like just a war out there. Somebody in the live chat just made great idea. Like oh my god, the sand people are actually the fremen. Yeah. The Tuscan Raiders oh, are actually that Fremen. Yeah. It's a big it's cross. Listen, the whole but you bring up Top Gun Maverick, right? They, see, that's what goes through my head when I think about the pos and and what Patty Jenkins kind of described in those early days years ago about what kind of the vision for it would be. The, the idea of a Top Gun Maverick. I just want to see the briefing room mm -hmm. where like the general is that's talking to these important. hot shot. X-wing pilots, we gotta do this. We're gonna go attack an enemy we don't know about to blow up their facility for some reason. That's all fine. And then like massive dog fights in space. He's on my tail. I can't shake him. Yeah. He'll give you a quarter for every time somebody says and, that. And, like I want to see that. But the consequences of this movie too can revert reverberate to the f next movies. This is just a war that maybe uh, turns the tide. Whatever this and that. You you gotta have camaraderie between the pilots. That's what I love about Top Gun Maverick. You got to have like that, that, and uh, Patty Jenkins can give us that sort of sense of, uh, you know, we're on a team, this and that. We're I on mean, a mission. Yeah. And you know what? I don't need to connect to any of the other movies. I could care less. Oh, yeah, right. I could care less. But we have to have when a reason they to fight. We have happened. to have a reason we're fighting, though, right? Well, Top Gun Maverick didn't have a reason oh, right, they were right, fighting, right? right? right they right, never right. even True. mentioned the Porkins True. origin story. <laughs> they, I mean, the Top Gun Maverick never even named who the enemy was. I right? would love to see it on both sides, too. Both sides. Not me. It. Not me. I want you, to be like just Top Gun Maverick just, just once. Just I just want, want the X-Wing pilots. Yep. I just want the X-Wing pilots. I don't need to become emotionally attached to the bad guy pilots. I don't want to feel bad when our hero blows up, blows them up, and think about their kids. Like, I can just picture it now, right? The X-Wings are in a dogfight, and they shoot down the enemy pilot who we've gotten to know through the movie, and the enemy pilot's you know, ship crashes, and then there's just a close up of the cockpit with the dead hand, and then the camera pans over to his windshield, yeah. and there's a picture of his daughter, of his two daughters that he loves so much. And we're supposed, no, 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 no. Oh, I just want yeah. the X Wings blowing shit up. Yeah, you, that's what I you, want. You just want to get the bad guys. So, do you see any military uh, themes in this movie? Of or course. how heavy? It's how heavy Rogue do you Squadron. want it? Yeah, how heavy do you want it, though? I, I want it as heavy as you can make it to the point that you don't compromise on the action of the film, That's right? Exactly, yeah. Make it a big, you know, the the rebel, the, whether it's the rebel alliance or whether it's the new republic or whether it's the new new republic or whatever you want to call it, that's fine. And like push the military aspect of it 
up until the point that, you know, top, again, using Top Gun Maverick as an example, Top Gun Maverick did that really well. Like it, it had big military themes, but they stopped it to the point to make sure it didn't impact the action and the adrenaline of it all. You know who should be the star of it? Uncle Iroh. Oh my God, Mr. Remember Kim? He was, he was in the, uh, he was- Sign uh, me up. I'll, I'll go watch him it's in it. It's his background story, how he became- <laughs> 100%, I would totally go watch him Kim's in this. convenience. Anyway, look, it's important to note that while Patty Jenkins is saying that yeah. she's she's continuing now to work on it, this is back on the table, it's not greenlit yet. So this may still, we it's, may go right back and remind ourselves, oh, right, this is Lucasfilm, and this could, film may never happen, but I'm happy to hear it's still on the could, books. Could this be a Gal Gadot situation with James Gunn? You know how she was telling everyone, oh, we're fine, I'm fine. It's you know, Remember how she was telling everybody that story we did where Gal Gadot said, oh. Yeah, I doubt it. That wasn't like green lit, yeah, but. I don't know what the hell Gal Gadot thought she right. was talking about. But okay, Patty so... Jenkins is saying, no, we actually signed the deal. Okay, so this is. And I'm back on working on this. Okay. Yeah, I, I think. But again, that doesn't mean the project's green lit. She may turn in a draft and Lucasfilm may hate it, right? Or whatever. But so, and again, it's Lucasfilm. So when they announce a project, you got a 5% chance that it's actually going to make it to the theaters. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? I mean, I would love to see this come to the screen, like because I think the potential is so good. I mean, yeah, it could be terrible, maybe, but I would love to see them take a shot at this movie. I've been excited about it ever since they first announced it. Do you think it's actually going to happen? I am doubtful that it actually will, but let's try to remain optimistic. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, with that down... Let's move on to this, shall we? Yesterday, news broke that the showrunner, Bo, what, what's his last Bo name? Bo DeMeo. It is DeMeo. Yeah. Okay, so Bo DeMeo, the creator and showrunner for X-Men 97, which we just talked at the beginning of the show, getting huge, rave responses and reactions from people who've seen the first three episodes, was out of nowhere, fired. You know what? No one's even confirmed yet that he was fired. For all we know, he might have just left. But everybody's saying he was fired, even though nobody's confirmed that. But let's go with fired. Was fired off the show that was already done, was getting ready to debut and premiere, and he had already written all of season two and was starting to put together ideas for season three. So clearly, Disney liked what he was doing. According to the first reactions, he must have done a bang-up, incredible job, and all of a sudden, poof, he was gone. Now, on yesterday's show, Rob and I talked about the fact that clearly this was not a creative decision. This was not a situation of creative differences. Uh, triple X Men 97. <laughs> like, this is clearly not about creative differences. Yeah. This was something that we said was probably going to be... This is something that involves HR, right? What it is, we don't know. Now, the dominant thing going around right now is that that is being brought up on even some of the major trades is saying some people are speculating this has the fact due to the fact that Bo DeMeo had an OnlyFans account and some saying he put up one or two explicit pictures of himself in OnlyFans, which I guess is what you do on OnlyFans. I've never... I'm not even exaggerating. I've never been on OnlyFans. I feel like I should just so I can be more culturally well-rounded. But I've never been there, so I assume that's what they do. <laughs> but Good. You're, you haven't been there? Good. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> but <laughs> there's also some thoughts out there. Some people are saying, well, there's whispers that maybe, you know, he was uh, like verbally abusive or all that kind of stuff. And maybe that ends up being true. But Marvel has worked with him for years. That he's did early drafts of Blade. He was one of the. They liked his work that he did on um, Moon Knight, um, and so they have worked with him for years. So that they just suddenly thought that he was this—that's iffy to me. But again, that's what some of the whispers are. Whether those whispers are true or not, the main thing that uh, several of the major outlets are talking about, though, is the OnlyFans thing. And I have thoughts on that. And, and, and I got two different ways of thinking on this, and I'm not even sure which way I lean. 
and I'm sure you guys will have your own opinions on this. My first thought is, did they really fire the guy? Now, this is let's just for the sake of the discussion, we're assuming that the reports about that they fired him due to OnlyFans, something that neither he nor Disney have said is the facts. But let's just go with that for a second for the sake of the discussion. If they actually fired him because of having an OnlyFans and all that kind of stuff, my first thought is, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, only, having an OnlyFans is, is legal, right? That There's no laws against it. It's perfectly legal, perfectly legit thing for an individual to have, right? Perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. <laughs> the blockade. Oh, no, I walked right into that. <laughs> it's, it is. Yeah, I mean. In, in as Caucasian of a way as I can say it, perfectly legal for him to do <laughs> if he wants and you 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 fire him for that now that that becomes it becomes a separate conversation if they approached him and said hey yo bo uh we're kind of disney and this is kind of a cartoon it'd be really great if you didn't have an OnlyFans account right now. Hey, Bo, I was reading some articles on OnlyFans, and uh, we stumbled we ran into your account. <laughs> I was reading articles yeah. on OnlyFans. Yeah, we. I subscribe for the articles. <laughs> now let's let's <laughs> again. It's it's a totally different conversation. If say Disney approached him and said, "Hey, listen, we noticed you got an OnlyFans. Uh, we're Disney, and this is a cartoon, and it'd be great if you could just shut that down, please." And he said. Nah, I like having OnlyFans. Okay, maybe that's a different conversation. That becomes a different conversation. But if they just straight up went and fired the dude for having something that is completely legal, there's no rules about it. I'm like, especially if this guy made X-Men 97 as good as everybody is saying this show is right now, something I can't attest to because I haven't seen the first three episodes yet, but other people who have are saying the show's spectacular and that you liked his work so much, you had him already write season two. I think that's premature. That's one side of my brain. The other side of my brain is also, if I knew Bo DeMeo, which I do not, that maybe I would get on the phone with him at some point while he was making X-Men 97, and I knew that he had an OnlyFans, maybe got on the phone, hey, Bo, it's John. Yeah, uh, what the fuck are you doing? You're, you're, you're working for Disney. You know, the thing with the mouse? And you're making a cartoon. Not that cartoons are just for kids. And clearly X-Men 97 is targeting a big nostalgia thing for those of us who are adults. But it is a cartoon on Disney. Maybe, just maybe, it might not be the best idea right now. Maybe counterproductive to having an OnlyFans <laughs> while you're doing that. Perhaps, just throwing this out there, you might want to reconsider that course of action and take it down like right now. Just like Walmart Plus, there's a pause your account. You may want to do that. You may want to <laughs> the pause, pause your account. for three months or so. Um, I, are they trying, like, just in case there is backlash? of people not liking the show are they just trying to prevent any more oh, or like no, anything no, no. like pointing I, out no. pointing I, things out are they no because if that were the if they were doing that then nobody would work with them okay, okay. right okay. like if you're gonna wait a minute you're just worried people might not like x-men 97 so you're and doing this up the, before fact. the show even comes oh, out right, right, right. yeah no they then nobody would work with them um so yeah like i said on on one hand i'm like Listen, having an OnlyFans is a completely legal and, and legitimate thing to do if that's what somebody wants to do. God bless. I hate to put you on the spot, John. Okay. How would you handle this situation? If I was Disney? Yeah, like let's say okay. you were here, you're Disney, and this ha like, you saw the product. Right. You know the guy has this. How would you? That's just, just from All a, right. I would like to think. Now, first of all, there's a I lot would, of money involved too. I would think at least a good solid week about it before I did anything. Okay. But right, putting me on the hot seat, here's what I think I would do. I think if I already knew that the product he was creating for us was great, and this is our third project working on with him, and apparently it's all been good working with him so far. I think I would do what I said in the first scenario. I think I would get on the phone with his reps and say, we really like working with Bo. We love what he's done with X-Men 97. 
but it's come to our attention that he has an OnlyFans account, and that is not consistent with our brand as Disney, nor consistent with the branding of what he's working on for us, a cartoon. And we would really like for Bo to stop and make it disappear. And then if he does do that right away, then we move forward and deal with any controversy later. If he says no, then I'm saying, well, we don't want to be associated. We don't want Disney to be associated with that. So we're going to have to part ways. Uh, I see. So I would give him the option. Yeah. You give him the respect of, of yes. putting the ball in his court. Yes. Put the ball in his court. I would say to listen, we can't, we can't be associated with this. That's fine that you are. That's great. But we don't want to be. So if you're going to work with us, you need to disassociate yourself from that. And if you don't want to, that's your right, but it's our right not to work with you. Again, this is all for the sake of the discussion, just assuming that they fired him over the OnlyFans thing, I just want to throw out that disclaimer again, something that neither side has confirmed and it could be other things. But if that was the thing, yeah, I'd be like, hey, we saw that, you, that this is going on. We need you to stop for us to move forward. And if he stops, then we continue moving forward. And if anybody complains about it, we deal with it. But if he puts up any resistance to it, then I would say, yeah, well, we don't want to be associated with that, so we got to part ways. I, I, man, it's, but I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer here. This here's, here's what make it more complicated. Disney is not saying anything about it. And Bo DeMeo is not saying anything mm -hmm. about it. So we're only left here on the eve of this big show that so many people have been excited about, about to premiere. We're left with to do nothing but speculate about why is the creator and showrunner not a part of it. And and from what I from what I think, just from the name, I don't think OnlyFans was had that uh, stigma about it. Uh, like you could pretty much open up a OnlyFans and uh, do something like that's not even that. I think. Right? Oh yeah, no, you can do whatever you want on OnlyFans. Yeah, just just as long as you have fans of it, you could like I could put this bottle. And just take pictures sure, of it. Sure, but people are signing up to John yeah, Campia's right, OnlyFans right. to see this Italian I know, booty. But right? it doesn't. As soon as someone has an OF account, I, I don't think you should just say, "Oh, you know, oh, F. you know." What I mean, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not told. It's not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. But I wouldn't look at them in that way. To say, uh, yeah, and know. again, it's. In, I've said it twice. Let me say it a third time. Nobody has confirmed. Right. 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 Right that that is why he got fired, all right? This is just what's in some of the trades, and we are, for the sake of the discussion, saying, okay, if that is the case, do we agree with how Disney handled it? Do we agree? And listen, it could be a million other factors that we simply don't know about yet. But again, it's, it's not even something that I would talk about, except we are on the eve of this big, highly anticipated show coming out, and something neither Rob nor I have ever seen happen before. Days before the premiere, of, a, of this highly anticipated series, the creator and showrunner gets fired. I don't think I have ever seen this yeah. before. And and his social media is gone too, right? And he he deleted yeah, his social strange. media, his That's court, strange. his company email got wiped out, all this kind of stuff. And it's it's really interesting to, to see. And look, clearly this is all going to come out at some point, one way or another, it's all going to come out. And then we can probably analyze it better then. Right. But for now, we're in this situation in, in the entertainment space, a situation I have never seen before, we're that gonna, Rob has never seen before. We're going to need Agent Carter on the case. Yeah, he'd get Agent Carter, get Burt Macklin <laughs> on the case, for those of you who know He's what that Marvel. means. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this whole situation? I mean, I don't, I don't, listen, we don't even, we are very, very thin on actual facts. And just having some speculative discussions based on reports. So, I mean, I don't know. What do you think it's going to turn out to be? How are you going to feel if it was an OnlyFans thing? Do you think, listen, it's a legal thing. You shouldn't have fired him for it. Or are you like, it's the Disney brand and it's a cartoon. Of course they don't want a guy who's doing OnlyFans to be so... I, I don't know. How do you feel about it? What do you think is going to come out as a result of this? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys, with that down, we're going to move on now to the most important part of our show, which is hearing from you guys. What are your guys' thoughts, opinions, or questions? Uh, we're going to address those in just a minute, but before we do, we're going to take another second and thank another sponsor of today's episode, our friends at Harry's. 
Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Harry's. You know, guys, in order to start the John Campia show, I had to leave my high paying corporate job in order to set myself up to be happier and enjoy more personal success. Because sometimes to get what you want, you have to challenge the status quo and blaze your own trail. And that's exactly what the folks at Harry's did. You see, at Harry's, they saw customers getting ripped off by questionable products in the shaving industry and decided to do something better. Harry's decided to pave their own road by making beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of the other big brands, except Exceptional products, honest prices. That's Harry's. I have fallen in love with Harry's from their foaming shaving gel that feels just luxurious on the skin to their incredible razor that feels just as good in the hand as it does going over your skin. They've got rich lathering skin softening body wash and scents like Redwood, Wylands and Stone. You see, Harry's provides German engineered blades made in their own factory that stays sharp longer. You can get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel and a travel cover for just three bucks at harrys.com slash campia. Don't settle for the status quo. Blaze your own trail with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash campia. That's harrys.com slash campia for a $3 trial set. And thank you to our friends at Harry's for sponsoring today's episode of the John Campia Show podcast. All right, guys, with that all down, let's get over to your questions, shall we? Jonathan, what do we got up first? James Germain says, uh, so that Crow trailer looks like a good movie, just not a good Crow movie. But from looking at it, uh, I can see why they wanted Momoa not to say that Skarsgård doesn't look good. He looks like a beast. Um, I, so I saw the Crow trailer. And while I really didn't like the picture that came out of Skarsgård, I, like I, I didn't think it looked very good. And listen, I've said for years, I don't think this movie is going to be any good. And I don't think they should have even made this movie. The trailer was much better than I thought it would be. I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't think it was an amazing trailer. But considering how bad I expected the trailer to be, I mean, it looked dark. It looked violent. Um, it looked, you know, it, it was also took some different approaches and spins to it, which is what you should do with a remake. Again, I don't know if this movie is going to be good or be a total and utter dumpster fire, but you know, I only call it like I see it. The trailer itself was not so bad. And here's the thing: I also saw. Let me let me point this out too. When I when I took a look at the trailer this morning, I immediately looked down at the comments, and I knew what the comments are going to be: a bunch of diehard original. Crow loyalists are just going to bash on it no matter what, which was going to happen no matter how good or bad this trailer was. But I was reading the comments of a lot of people. It's like, oh, like hashtag only Brandon Lee and, and all this kind of stuff. So it was like, there are people complaining about this movie and this trailer as if they're really afraid, like they're scared. They're scared that if this movie is good or if people like this movie it somehow diminishes the original or somehow it 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 takes away from brandon lee or it takes away from brandon lee's performance as the crow or it takes away from you know that original film's place and it's that type of insecurity and fear i've never understood like listen the highlander is still in my top 10 all-time favorite movies list. The original Highlander with mm -hmm. uh, Christopher Lambert. But I'm excited that they're making another one. It, it Because if it's great, it doesn't take away from how much I love the original and it doesn't take away from the legacy of the original. If it's bad, it doesn't take away from the legacy of the original. It's just its own thing. And I, I just... Listen, I was with everybody when, it, when they showed the image. I'm like, this image doesn't look so good. I, I was with everybody on that. But I don't understand this need some people have for this movie to be hated. Like, there are people out there who need this movie to be hated and need it to be bad. And that I just don't get. It's its its, its own movie. It's going to be good. It's going to be bad. Whatever it is, it doesn't say anything or take away from your precious original one. Any more than a new Highlander is going to take anything away from my preciousness of the original Highlander. I, so I just don't get that. Now, the movie's going to be good or it's going to be bad. 
and we'll find out when it comes out. But again, I just thought the trailer was better than I was expecting it to be because I wasn't expecting much. Anyway, all right, what's next? Uh, we got Alex Von Gollum who says, a great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it, and he answers. Paul mm. did answer, but at a tragic and high cost. What a Shakespearean twist. Listen, this what is... A twist. I, I know Rob bristles when I bring this up, but the Dune books only go downhill from here. <laughs> I'm not saying all the Dune books are bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all the Dune books after the original are bad. I'm not. I'm just saying it's all downhill from here. Like the next Messiah is not as good as the first Dune book. Children of Dune is not as good. Then heaven forbid when you get to God Emperor of Dune and you're talking about a half man, half worm God who rules the universe for thousands of years. I mean, it just, it gets, it just gets really wacky. Uh, But that first one, that first book, which is what the first two movies are based on, is so good. And yeah, I love that line when his dad was talking to him in the first film. Loved it. All right, what's next? We got Amin who says, Hans Zimmer just announced he's doing a North American tour. Tickets go on sale next week. Can't wait. I'm going to see him in Toronto. Uh, he'll be in L.A. October 1st. I wonder if that's at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, either at the Hollywood Bowl. I think the last time he was in L.A., he did the... Uh, Uh, The Greek. I think he performed at the Greek. At at any rate, I just recently, uh, me and Anne and Martika Abara, who is the executive producer of our Designing Hollywood show, uh, went to see Hans Zimmer's lead violinist has a quartet. And they put on this show in L.A. of doing a bunch of Hans Zimmer music just as a four-string quartet because she's his lead violinist. And when they did Man of Steel's theme oh i almost cried i almost wept it was so beautiful i will definitely go to see this show i don't expect to be as good as john williams's show but i am very excited to go see when it happens all right what's next we got jay loco who says 2024 ray quotes so far (laughs) one we all need some willie in our life (laughs) p willie you know two they better butter up that rim for me when i grab it (laughs) you said that ray he did you said i did Number yep. three, you need to watch it with your eyes and not your butthole. <laughs> yeah, one of these days we're going to have to make a t-shirt just with all the rayisms. I think that would be yeah, a shirt that would like, sell oh, well. What does that shirt mean? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's Out of context, it, it seems pretty weird. <laughs> all right, what's next? Wade's Way says, uh, hey, John and crew, literally just watched the trailer for The Crow. I must say, in my, uh, in my opinion, I absolutely loved it. Definitely seeing it day one. Again, I... It was way better than I thought it was going to be. I got to check it out after the show. It's 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 a good trailer. Like like take take everything else away. Forget that. Oh, Brandon Lee in the original. Just look at the trailer on its own merits of a new movie coming out called The Crow. Blah blah. It it, it looks pretty good. I'm not going to say I thought it was fantastic, but it looked pretty good. Anyway, uh, you know right. what? Also, I just want to add to that is like that whole idea of like only Brandon. It's like the movie was made in the 90s. It's like 30 years old. So that's like something like in the 90s if something was made in the 60s and people are like, no, only Robert Redford. You know, I mean, it's like, dude, this is yeah. even this is a long time. Look, all movies are products of their era, right? And the one thing I said, like even when I was bashing on the uh, the look when the first image came out, one of the things I did say and admit was that Who's to say if that Crow movie, which was made in a different era, wasn't first made today, that that isn't exactly what it would look like today. Right. Right? Like, the scene is different. The culture is different. Again, I don't know that that's what it looked like, but it's just just something for us to keep in mind, I think. All right. What's next? Alec Andrew says, Beetlejuice trailer coming soon? Oh, From what later. I hear within the next week. Yeah, it should be soon, right? I, I think I heard with within the next week we're going to get it. Now, I can't confirm that. I, I don't know that as a fact. But I, I've been hearing that sometime within the next five, six, seven days, we're probably going to get the first Beetlejuice trailer. Yeah, I, it's by the way, and... I don't care about this movie. I really yeah, don't. I mean, it's six months away. I don't. I don't care about it at all. I like the first Beetlejuice as much as anybody else. I, I, really, I enjoy I don't think it's the all-time classic that some people think it is, but I enjoyed it a lot. But I have next to zero interest in this movie. People but seem maybe to love, the trailer changed my mind. Yeah, people seem to love that play. So maybe, you know, if they've got the writers, you know, they have a good idea, it could be great. Yeah. Now, now, will the writers have OnlyFans accounts, though? Yes, That's they the do. Question. They do, actually. Okay. 
All right, what's next? Uh, Harvest K. Cinema's Masters of the Needle Drop. Uh, one, Tarantino, two, Scorsese. Uh, three, James Gunn. Four, Edgar Wright. Five, Cameron Crow. Four, Say Anything and Almost Famous. Yeah, great, great. I'm not quite sure what you mean he by means Masters like great, of the Needle Drop. When they have, like, great uh, soundtracks. Oh, but great soundtracks? Oh, sure. oh yeah. They have Edgar Wright, Quentin Tarantino, Cameron. Oh yeah, absolutely. That yeah, one hundred percent. If that's what you mean by that, I'm with you on that completely. Good list. All right, what's next? Uh, Christopher Brickner says most of the Star Wars prequels uh, tie-in games were really good, and may and many can be bought virtually on modern consoles. I'd recommend Episode One, Racer, Republic Commandos, Starfighter, and Jedi Starfighter. The yeah, Racer, I did. the Pod Racer one was fun. Yeah, the Pod Racer one was fun. I'll tell you what, as much. As I hate the prequels, I will always defend that pod race sequence. It, it by the way, that pod race sequence in um, the Force Awakens, it is one of the greatest examples. The great Ben Burt, one of the greatest examples of sound design mm. ever in cinematic history. Mm -hmm. it's like seriously, if you have the Force Awakens, maybe you're a Disney Plus subscriber, maybe you've got the old DVD. I would encourage just put on the pod race right from the beginning of the race and just watch it, watch it. Or Phantom Menace, you mean, not Force Awakens. Yeah, oh yeah, sorry, Phantom Menace, thank you. And just watch it or experience it with your eyes closed. And just listen to the, I think it's like a 15, 20 minute scene, the, the pod race, but just listen to it. It is one of the finest examples of sound design ever ever in cinematic history. It's absolutely breathtaking. The great Ben Burt, by the way, Ben Burt was the sound designer on the original Star Wars trilogy and then was the sound designer and the editor of uh, The Phantom Menace. Again, a, a movie overall that I think is very terrible, but that pod race scene, I think is magnificent. I love it. Remind me a lot of Ben-Hur. All mm -hmm. right, what's next? Kyle Schneider says, love the new episode of Invincible. I hope the rest of the season is as good and unpredictable as this. Again, I I did not hate the first part of season two, so don't misinterpret me. <laughs> I, I just didn't love the first half of season two the way I loved season one. I thought season one was amazing. And season two, quite frankly, I found a bit underwhelming. So I'm, I'm not feeling that urge to jump on. Like Ann and I last night were going through uh, the TV, but you know, about half hour before we went to bed, trying to find something to watch. It's like, oh, it says the new uh, Invincible's on. I'm like, yeah. You feel any urge to watch it right now? She said, no, not even like me either. It's, so, so I don't know. It's Thursday. Yeah? Halo. Halo. Oh, the next Halo's out Oh, today. I don't got internet at my... <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it's fine. you know what? I want to watch it with you anyway. Come over tonight and watch it at my place. <laughs> if I anyone watch doesn't it on... know, there's there's a house that caught on fire. The pole actually... Because had... isn't it your dad's birthday too? Yeah, it's my dad's birthday. Yeah, yeah so like I think all of... Is, yeah, might I think be they, they over went too. to go see him today, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later, so. come over later. Let's watch, uh, yeah. let's Halo later. All right, anyway, what's next? The Vegetable Addict says, I'm just so hyped that Godzilla X Kong is in theater soon, seeing the American Society of Magical Negroes uh, to pass the time. I'm seeing that on Monday. I'm looking forward to that. That's with... Uh, I have no idea what yeah. that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I just it's, saw the poster for it. Yeah, um, Greer. Uh, Alan, Dave, David, 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 David Greer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy was just, who just narrated the Oscars? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, that I love him. I think he's great. Yeah. I, but I've never heard of this. What I a will, title. Yeah. I'll, I'll, when we're, while we're talking, I'll come up with the synopsis over here. But yeah. All right. Listen, I was looking forward to Godzilla versus X, and I don't know how this makes any sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. But after, did I say Godzilla yeah, versus, versus X? X. Godzilla X. So, like, so X many different movies. Though. Kong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but when I came out of Dune 2, I was just so hyped up on the movies that I just like, when's Godzilla, when's the next Godzilla Kong movie? When is it? When is it? Because I just want to get back into the theater and experience it. So now I'm actually really excited for it because of Dune 2, which Too is bad. weird. Too bad. You okay. got our tickets for it, yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. you? You Too already bad. bought our tickets. Too bad. Your, your, your excitement will go back down probably. <laughs> yeah, once, once I see it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so it's uh, David Allen Greer, uh, Justice Smith. He was in- uh, I know, yeah. He was he was in uh, Detective Pokemon. Pikachu. Yeah. Yep. Uh, a, a, a young man gets recruited into a secret society of magical black people who dedicate their lives to making white people's lives easier. All, <laughs> oh my. What? 
Although initially enamored with his new powers, he begins <laughs> to question the value of using, say, a supernatural means to do the very thing he felt obligated That's to do his whole life. Today or so soon, I think. Oh, wait, is this a streaming one? No, 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 no it's, it's in theaters. It's website. I just saw the poster. It's in the coming soon section. How is this being in theaters? And I've never there, I, there hasn't even been a trailer. I'm seeing it on Monday. Okay, I I am instantly just you reading the synopsis. I'm on board. I want to see this. All right, what's next? All right, uh, <laughs> gotta remember oh, where I'm at. March 15th. Christopher Mark, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher Brickner. I don't buy the Rogue Squadron film happening. I'll buy X-wing and uh, Tie Fighter special edition games on stream for a Rogue Squadron experience. Listen, yeah. the reality is this: no matter how much I want to see this movie made. I I am with you. I I have some serious doubts that it's actually going to yeah. happen because Lucasfilm under Kathleen Kennedy again not taking away any of the successes she's had there. She has had successes and I'm man enough to acknowledge the successes they've had. But in general under Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm has been a mess. An unorganized, disheveled, poorly laid out and poorly planned mess. And as long as that's the case, I, I, I just, I cannot count on this movie happening. I, I like any movie they say they're going to make, you just can't count on it until it's actually in theaters. All right, what's next? Um, let's see, we've got uh, Christopher Brickner, who just corrects himself. I meant TIE Fighter, not Tighter. But that worked too. Yeah, right. I'd play that game as well. Yeah. yeah. Only on OnlyFans. All right, what's next? Sven says, or Sven says, uh, the trailer for season 17 of Taskmaster just dropped. Honestly, one of the funniest things on TV right now. Nick Mohammed, uh, Nate in Ted Lasso, uh, is one of the contestants this, this season. All right. I've never heard of it. I have never heard of Taskmaster. I am assuming this is a UK show. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Because to me, Taskmaster is a bad villain in a Black Widow movie. Or a good <laughs> villain in the comics. Or a good, or a good character suddenly in Thunderbolts. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know this thing at all. Okay, yeah, so... It's a series? So some people in the live in the live chat are saying it's a British show. Oh, okay. Saying it's a UK show. Okay. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, I didn't... Uh, I've never heard of it, so I'm going to have to look it up. All right. Somebody... Canadian Spring is saying, you are missing out if you haven't seen Taskmaster. I'll <laughs> keep my eyes open for it. All right. I've no idea what it is, though. All right, what's next? I miss out on a lot of things, though. Sam Fisher <laughs> says, has anyone ever been nominated for Best Actor in consecutive years under the same director? Because Emma Stone, Yorgos Lanthimos has a movie coming out in June of 21. June, June 21st, I guess. Okay, so I know Tom Hanks was nominated and I think won Best Actor back-to-back yeah, -back years, but I don't think it was with the same director. No, because one was Philadelphia and one was for Forrest uh, Gump. So yeah. yeah, so it was not with the same director. Um, I, I mean, that's the last time I think anyone won back to back. Any actor won back to back Oscars. I think was Tom when Tom Hanks did it for Philadelphia and and, and Gump. Um, I can't think of any off the mm. top of my head. I mean, it because, very well may have happened. Because you've got to have the same director too, so that gets well. And you have to have the same director and same a actor who make films so close together yeah. that they actually come out right. one year right after the yeah. other. That's tough. So it's a great trivia question, but I don't know the answer off the top of my head. It's a good question, though. All right, what's next? Okay. Um, City of Swift says, uh, I work for the executive price moderator of a major streaming service, and he was impressed by your predictions. Oh, great. Oh, okay. oh no. <laughs> I, this is a joke. I, I want to hire that man. Uh, he'd like to schedule an interview at Necktie Tunnel in Vernon. Please come alone. Uh, yeah, at so midnight. that's that's see that's the thing. Like a bunch of people, we did that video the other day on, you know, streaming is about to get more expensive right, and credits. irritating, and here's why. And a lot of people just got mad at me, not because they thought I was wrong, but because they thought I was giving the streaming industry ideas. Exactly. But I guarantee you, these are things they already had planned, <laughs> or if they're happening, the things they already had planned. All right, what's next? Uh, we've got and. Yeah, Andy, who says, now that the Oscars are done, I'm focused on the Emmys. Hope that Scarlett Johansson gets an Emmy nom for her SNL skit she did last weekend. I did not see it. Oh, I, I did I, not see it either. No, I saw I saw the headlines for it, but I didn't actually see it. I don't know what she would get an Emmy. Because she can't even be up for best guest appearance because that would be whoever was the host of the right. 
uh, SNL that week because she was not the host. So I don't even think she'd be qual she would qualify for any of the Emmys. But I'm just looking forward to the Emmys for Shogun because what was what did they call Chainmail Cannon? What? Are, oh my oh. God, cannons and Shogun, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest thing I've seen on TV in a long time. Like it's been a while, probably since. God, House of the Dragon, which is now we're going on a couple of years, mm. that something happened on a television show where both Ann and I at the same time went, oh, my God. Oh, you were <laughs> shocked, huh? Oh, my God. It was so good. Anyway, Shogun. Shogun, Shogun. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Frigo. Oh, well, Tornagasama. All right, what's next? Speaking of which, Andy's back and says, after seeing Blackthorn take a bath in the latest episode, I realized that he's pretty shredded. Yeah. I thought the series was called Shogun, not Shogun. Not Shogun. Oh, I got... Somebody sent my my buddy sent me this clip today. Hold on a second. Let me just you you're not going to hear it. I just want to get the actual wording right. Um, tell this milk dribbling. Hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> tell this milk dribbling fuck smear. I'm ready to go. What a great line. <laughs> tell that milk I dribbling fuck it, smear okay. that I'm ready to go. <laughs> Ah, Shogun, ladies and gentlemen. It's so freaking good. Again, guys, if you are not watching Shogun, what are you doing? Watch Shogun. It's so it is the best thing on TV right now. Best thing we've had on TV in a while. It's so good so far. Oh All my right. God, I got have an OnlyFans emoji coming up pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, and John Blackthorne, by the way, the character played by Cosmo in Shogun, it's like he lays down the best burns. His insults are amazing in the show. They're so good. Okay, anyway, what's next? Um, Spooky Castle Production says, do you feel as though the new Crow reboot isn't stylistic enough? Personally, it would have been a nice, have been nice to revisit a more gothic aesthetic. Thoughts? And it would have been out of the wrong era. The, the whole 90s goth vibe? Okay, that would be great if you're making a movie that's supposed to be in the 90s, but that's not what this is. Um Again, for all I know, this movie is going to be a big pile of trash. I'm not trying to defend the movie, but I thought it was quite stylized for the proper and right era. I thought it it worked pretty well. And you know what, Kate, okay, one thing I'll say, you remember I said the, the trailer I don't think is fantastic. One thing that I think they did a great job with in the trailer, because remember, a trailer's like two minutes. They made me believe in two minutes that this dude loved this girl. And that's a really hard thing to do in two minutes. Because, yeah, you can say in a trailer, you can have the hero going, I love her with all my heart. Okay, you can say that. But they made me believe that this dude loved this chick. Like, loved her. And... Uh, so that's one thing it did very, very well. But no, I thought the style of it was perfectly fine uh, for what it was. And again, if they try to make it feel more goth, it could be like, like, did somebody get, remind this guy that it's not the 80s or 90s anymore? But anyway, that's just my thought on it. All right, what's next? We got Kyler Hoddick who says, since the international Oscar is technically awarded to the country, who keeps the statue, the director of the studio or the government? It's probably the, the same thing as best picture yeah, it's, it's, it's the main producer yeah whoever the main the main pga accredited denoted producer is that's per probably the person right. who, who keeps the oscar all right what's next city swift says do you or did you take your oh only fans down ray just in case oh no i'm putting it up right now actually. yeah it's the opposite yeah and it's not only fans it's only flans please yes. it's onlyfans.com slash a taste of ray no it's uh, that's where you can flans, find it onlyfans.com slash a taste it's me eating caramel flan all the time <laughs> letcha flan whatever you call it it's good you guys know it all right what's next carlos Souza says i wish they uh just called it x-men with no 97 to it well, this way, it's a throwback it continuous. Yeah, that. I mean, listen, I agree. I agree with you. It should, be, it should just be called X-Men Animated or something like that. But to Jonathan's point, it immediately denotes exactly what this is. So I, I have no problem with the title. Again, a title doesn't make a show better or worse. It's just a title. But it does identify it very well and kind of lets you know what you're getting into when you see it. So I'm with you. I would have just preferred X-Men or X-Men Animated or something like that. But X-Men 97 works. All right, what's next? Dallas Designer says, is it me or is it ironic that Ray's favorite X-Men are the only ones that wore trench coats? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you are right. I didn't even. Uh, I didn't even nice. think of that. Maybe uh, that's it, Ray. Maybe. Oh, maybe you looked at her in, and just saw Gambit. It was in me the whole time. <laughs> that's good. Could have been. All right. Only people who regularly watch our show will understand what any of that meant. All right. What's next? Um, Justin Evans says, I watched the Crow trailer and I have to say that I am curious. I've never seen the OG, and I wonder if you think I should watch the remake first, Spring of the Filthy. I, look, I have this uh, personal opinion on things. If a new movie is coming out to a book or to a older movie that I haven't seen, I make it a rule for myself to not read that book or watch that older movie until I've seen this new one. Because... If you do, you are taking away your ability, at least a part of your ability to judge this new movie on its own merits, which is how all film fans should approach every movie, judge it on its own merits. So my personal recommendation would be, yeah, skip the original film. And, and just if you're planning on watching this new film, watch the new film, then go back and watch the original because then you're not kind of robbing yourself, I think. All right. What's next? Jay Lil says, uh, excited for Joker 2. I'm so freaking hyped. <laughs> I got to admit, I am not super excited for Joker 2 <laughs> yet. I, I loved the first film. Loved it. But I haven't been able to feel this one yet, right? Now, ask me again once the first teaser drops. Yeah. I mean, once the first... That could change everything. Because that teaser for the original Joker, that got everyone excited. Oh, my God. It was Where it so ends with good. him in the in the elevator and he just smiles. Oh, it was just, I, I they just knew how to just hit all the right notes with that. And if they do it again, I'll get there. And don't get me wrong, I am looking forward to Joker 2. I just can't say that I'm like jumping out of my seat excited for it yet. But once the first trailer drops, I have a feeling that's going to change. All right, what's next? All right. Uh, Ray Loves Trench Coats writes, Absolutely love uh, Resident Alien. Um, uh, Alan, Alan Tudyk, Tudyk is amazing. I amazing zing. zing. Yeah, amazing zing. It is such a precious show. Alan Tudyk is a national treasure. I, I an underrated national treasure. I love this guy. Um, I, I, I mean, I've told the story before, but I mean, the first time I bumped into him, hadn't even talked to him yet. I was walking down a press hallway. It was empty. Me and Chuck Norris. Yes, his name was Chuck Norris. No, not the Chuck Norris you're thinking of. Uh, we're walking down this hallway, and we passed by the uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil press room. Mm -hmm. And we weren't going into that press room. I was going to another press line. And I st we stopped because they got a big standing poster of Tucker and Dale versus Evil outside the door. And I stop at the door because Alan Tudyk's in the poster. And I point at Alan Tudyk and I say to Chuck, I said, I love this guy. And then I noticed that just as I was saying that, Alan Tudyk was coming right up behind me to go into the room. And he heard me say that and he just looked at me and went, and then just walked into the room, which again was great. If you haven't seen it, it's a really, really fun little show. You should check it out. All right, what's next? We got uh, Sh uh, Shesla, I think it's all. Probably said that wrong. If uh, you can only watch one TV show this year, released or upcoming, what would it be? For me, The Recruit Season 2. Oh, fuck that. Shogun. Probably Shogun. Yeah. <laughs> fuck everything else. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It's Shogun. It is the best thing on TV. It's the best thing that's going to be on TV this year. Uh, I mean, of course, obviously, we've got House of the Dragon Season 2 coming. Maybe that's going to be just as awesome. But, like, right now, yeah, Shogun. Easy. Shogun's the show I've been waiting for my whole life. Yep. Like, without exaggeration, my whole life I've been waiting for the Shogun series. Ever since I was a child and and, and the Richard Chamberlain, John Reese davies uh, miniseries of it was out, I, the, I've been waiting for this forever, so absolutely Shogun. All right, what's next? Uh, we got Itzante, who says, with the cancellations of Eternals, uh, well, we don't know that yet. Yeah, and just the, to be clear, Eternals has not been canceled. Yeah. They're, they're saying just on hold. And the Marvel, uh, the Marvels, uh, does that mean they won't include the characters in other movies? I really want more Barry Keegan or Kogan uh, in the MCU, and the ending was a cliffhanger. I don't, yeah. No, not, by the way, that was a $20 super chat. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for, for uh, supporting us on that level, man. Appreciate that. Um, no, no, it doesn't mean that at all. I mean, it, they absolutely still can appear. Like, look, 
Black Widow appeared in how many Mm -hmm. Marvel movies before she ever had her own? And turns out they never should have done that movie, that Black Widow movie. But at least we got Red Guardian out of it. Um, 100% we can still see Eternals characters and 100% we can still see Captain Marvel. I think we will see Captain Marvel. I think we will see Ant-Man again at some point. It just won't be in Captain Marvel 3 or Ant-Man 4. So yes, 100% we can still see those characters. All right, what's next? Uh, Anubis Genocide said it was a $20 super chat. Finally saw Dune Part 2 last night. Was fantastic, but also got to say, I think Oppenheimer had me more enthralled. Maybe because Oppen is a type of genre of a film I never really had been interested in, whereas Dune is right up my alley. And, and by the way, and thank you, uh, Anubis Genocide, for supporting us in that level. Appreciate that, man. Um, yeah, listen, all film is subjective. Like, the important thing is you love both of those movies. Yeah. Which one you preferred over the other is totally fine. I mean, that that's great. But even if you loved one and hated the other, that's totally fine, too. It's all subject. So all films hit us in, in different and unique ways. That said. Here we go. Yeah, to me, it's not even close. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, again, Christopher Nolan gets on his knees beside his bed every night and prays to the movie gods and thanks them profusely that Dune 2 moved out of 2023 into 2024. Because those seven Oscars Oppenheimer won, maybe would have been two, maybe one. Um, Dune Dune was winning Best Picture in twenty uh, for the twenty twenty three Oscars had it come out that year. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to think it was better. It does it not at all. I mean, again, this is my own subjective opinion, just like yours is yours, and your opinion on these things is no more and no less valid than mine. Right, thanks for sharing your thoughts, man. I appreciate that. All right, what's next? On to our members. Ken says, hey, John and crew was wondering if you have seen the movie White Chicks with Marlon Wayans and Sean Wayans. One of my favorite comedies. It is one of Anne's favorite comedies. So many references. Yeah, Anne Anne loves that movie, and I don't... But yes, I did see it. It was totally charming when it came out. I mean, I got to admit, Anne had it on TV about a year ago, and I watched a bit of it again. It lost its luster. It it loses a little bit. Yeah, Yeah, it, 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 it hasn't aged great but it was still funny uh but i remember really enjoying it the first time i saw it it'd been a while since i'd seen it all right what's next red one real talk says cinemacon is right around the corner yep. have you confirmed who's going and what uh are you looking forward to seeing with less than a month before the big day um i am going and ann is going that's the only i know yet i don't I as of right now i don't know if jonathan's going i don't know if ray's going i don't know if rob's going i i don't know that yet We'll get it figured out. Um, the thing I am most looking forward to, I honestly don't know. Because the only thing that I know for a fact that we're getting is they're giving us, they're going to show us a full screening of the Fall Guy. But there's three other screenings that we don't know what they are yet. Rob still insists that one of them is going to be Deadpool 3. <laughs> I, and I just think it's too early for them to show us Deadpool 3. Uh, but I love his enthusiasm. Other than that, listen, I just love the presentations every year. every Because every year, every presentation always has a surprise. You know, it's funny last year because Warner Brothers usually kills it with their presentations. And I didn't mm-hmm. think their presentation was all that good last year. Mm-hmm. Um, other than, you know, Christopher Nolan coming on stage to talk about Oppenheimer, which was, which was really good. Um, but yeah, just the presentations... That one screening, listen, I, I always love CinemaCon. I've been going every year for a long time, and there's a reason for that. It's just, it's my Disneyland as a movie fan, going every year. And yeah, it's it's freaking expensive, so that's why there's a lot of things I don't do every year. <laughs> but it's just to save up for CinemaCon. But yeah, I just absolutely love it, man. All right, what's next? Uh, Dominic Suma says, how would you rank these three Spielberg films, Jaws, E.T., and Jurassic Park? Um, I don't do rankings. Um, Probably just put it just the way you wrote it. Those are all three all-time great movies. I mean, they're just three all-time great movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't know E.T. or Jaws or Jurassic Park? I mean, it's just, again, that's part, just three of the many reasons Steven Spielberg is the greatest filmmaker of all time. All right, what's next? Uh, We got Paul Robertson who says... John and Gang, the Roadhouse reviews are coming out, and it's not looking good. Oh, Ooh, boy. that's too bad because what's his name? Uh, the director, uh, um, Lying Ly- McLypants. Oh, uh, Doug Lyman. Doug Lyman, Doug the Liar, according 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 to um, 
Doug Jake Doug Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. Uh, he was saying that Amazon's test audiences were the highest they've ever had and all this kind of stuff. So yeah. really, not good, huh? When is this supposed to drop? Uh, let me check it out. Yeah, look okay. look that up. And is it on? Let me just double check. It's on Amazon. Thing. Yeah, it's on Amazon. I just don't know when it's supposed to drop. Let me look up to uh, Roadhouse uh, Rotten uh, Tomatoes. 21st. Of this month? Uh -huh. So like in a week? Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Right now, we've got... Here it is. Well, it's got... Look, right now, it's got a 73%. I mean, it's got a... seven. That's, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not... It's not anything to write. It's not like breaking any records. But I mean, seventy-three percent isn't bad. I would expect that from a roadhouse. I mean, honestly, yeah, I don't... Uh, that's right around where I kind of expected it to be. All right, what's next? Uh, we got, and I got to be able to see. Uh, Espinoza says it's game day. Game, game day. day. The uh, finale for both Masters of Air and Dynasty New England Patriots is that is tonight. Taylor Swift Eras Tour is on Disney Plus. Oh wow, I also know what Anne's gonna be doing later. Drops tonight at six. Uh, to quote Mad Max Fury Road, what a day, what a glorious day. I have not watched any of uh, what's it called Masters of the Air. Nor have I. Uh, and I've not watched any of the New England Patriot thing. Now, I'm going to watch the New England Patriot docuseries, obviously. Uh, but I have just not gotten around to it. I'm probably going to binge it probably on some Sunday afternoon while uh, Anne's out shopping or I'd something. I'd be curious to find out if Disney has a little bit of a crash at 6 o'clock with the Eras Tour. With the Eras Tour. I'll tell you what, because like I, I've seen a lot of chatter about it. And then like Disney just announced that there's a bonus song in it that wasn't in the theatrical version. Yep. It's like, oh! Yeah, like I think people, this is crashing. Yeah, Disney may very well... Cra Disney Plus may crash out around 6 o'clock tonight so oh, wow. i actually i'm probably gonna log in just to see just if it to does see, yeah if it's loading yeah all right what's next uh our one armaldo armaldo says uh did you guys know some actually made a two-hour i guess someone actually made a two-hour long animated movie called philippe the sentient dancing microphone not sure if it's real but it has an imdb and has listed four million dollar budget I don't know how you um, fake I am. I'm pretty but... sure no one actually made a two hour movie. It's yeah. somebody see this. Okay. This is actually a great example about why I always say about IMDB that rock solid. You can count on it for movies that have already come out in theaters, but you cannot trust it for movies that have not come out because it is not difficult for anybody just to go in there like a Wikipedia and just put stuff on there. Uh, it, it's why you should, Never really, not, not, listen, not that it is a hundred percent can't trust it. It's just a, you can't necessarily, I've, so, I've had people send me that picture, this poster of Felipe, the sentient dancing microphone. Yeah. But again, no, I do not believe anybody's actually made a two hour movie of it. They nah. just put it up on there. All right. What's next? Uh, we got Jose, uh, or Ho Jose Myers, who says, um, I was playing Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. It, uh, brings me back memories when I play it in PS2, aka PlayStation DOS. DOS. Um, I read a lot of headlines this morning that it, that the drop, the, that game dropping was a disaster. Mm. I read tons of headlines today that like there were tons of problems. I, I did not experience this myself. I didn't try it, but I read so many headlines saying it was an absolute disaster. What, what game are we talking about? Uh, Battlefront Classic. Oh, is that that drop? Did that drop today? I, t t today or last night or oh, something okay. like that. And all the headlines just said like it was just riddled with problems and bugs and all this kind of stuff. Again, I didn't play myself, but I just saw a lot of headlines on it. All right, what's next? Derek Pierce says. Uh, hey, John and crew, I'm sitting here reformatting my laptop and watching the show. Thanks for keeping the team at the uh, Brickspace entertained while we work. Oh, we got a whole team watching us. Oh, hey. Brickspace. What's Brickspace? That's the, uh, they do the Legos. There's the one that sent, oh, I forgot the, oh, next, tomorrow. We have to show the. There the, were like eight different thoughts you started. The one yeah, that's they all no, cried no, 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 at once. No, no. <laughs> he, he actually made Leg Legos based on all of us. And like he said, oh, yeah. on it. I hadn't seen it. And I, I, and I have it. I just you should never don't know how to, to pull me. it right now. Okay, well, you don't have to pull it right now. Okay. Just make sure I see it at some point. Okay. Anyway, thanks for joining us, man. We're glad to help you through the work day. All right, what's next? All right. Uh, Paul Robertson says, hey, John, a crew with yourself and the crew going to CinemaCon. Well, John's going to, uh, one thing, John, do your best not to get sick in Vegas because it always happens every time you mm -hmm. go there. Not last time. Nope. Not last year. Uh, did you come? 
you go there, you come sick as a dog. So just watch yourself out there. Thanks. I mean, I haven't really gotten that sick going to Vegas since the one time we went to go to the uh, uh, the Web Television Awards, yeah. uh, where we won uh, Best Live Series, which was a great day. You had that cough recently, but I feel like you had that before you went. You know, people. No, have yeah, I know. The cough <laughs> I had was I got that over Christmas. Right. Um, and that's the one that sent me to the hospital. But yeah, the last couple of times I've gone to Vegas, I've been perfectly good, been perfectly okay. But see that time, even that time that we went for the, for the awards ceremony, I had, I got, I went straight there, literally straight there after finishing a 24 hour streaming marathon. I did a 24 hour streaming marathon, signed off, grabbed my bag and got in the car and went to Vegas. And then surprise, surprise, I got deathly ill. It was horrible, but I sh I'll be fine. I'll be fine. All right. What's next? Uh, Sammy Dennis says, uh, John, I just saw, uh, I or was just rewatching daredevil season two, that dialogue between Frank and Matt on the rooftop. It's excellent. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is definitely top tier writing. Daredevil is so much more than it's action. Oh yeah. Yeah. Daredevil is like anybody can make an action thing, but I always say action without narrative purpose is just visual noise. I don't care how good the choreography is. Action without narrative purpose is just visual noise. Daredevil is a great show. It's a great show, period. Take out the action. It's still a great show. It's made even better by the action. But take out the action. It's still a terrific show with well-developed characters, great plot, um, and great narrative flow. It, it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful show. I can't wait to see him back. All right, what's next? B-Dog says, hey, John and crew, uh, have any of you been keeping up with Halo Season 2? Paramount is missing big time with this one, in my opinion. Oh. Would love to hear your thoughts. Could not disagree with you more. Oh, wow. Now, no, don't get me wrong. It's not Shogun. It's not Shogun. But I think, I like, I thought Season 1 was okay. Yeah. It had its... Heights, it had its valleys. I think season two is a definitive improvement. And oh, yeah. I have I have quite legitimate again, it's not Shogun, it's not House of the Dragon, it's not Last of Us, but I have definitely been enjoying watching I, this I, season. I'm very curious to know. So maybe if we talk again or we hear from you again, why? Because I actually find it very good too. This yeah, I, I've been really enjoying it. So I got to just, I mean, again, I totally respect your opinion right. on it. Doesn't work for you. Doesn't work for you. Nothing wrong with that. But for me, I, I personally disagree. I've been quite enjoying it this year. Again, not, I don't think it's fabulous, but I've, I've been quite enjoying it. All right. What's next? Um, uh, Sermal. Well, I'm just going to say Sir Maul. Uh Chris Pratt and Rebecca Ferguson, Sci-Fi Mercy, uh, get summer 2025 release date on Amazon. What are your expectations? Look, I am a big Chris Pratt fan. And uh, who doesn't love Rebecca Ferguson? So, uh, yeah, until we know more, what is there to say? But, yeah, you, you tell me you're going to have a movie with Chris Pratt and Rebecca Ferguson. You've already got me on board. Now it's now it's yours to make me get off <laughs> like if put no. out terrible trailers and whatever oh yeah that wording <laughs> phrasing it's phrasing. up to you to get me off uh <laughs> phrasing ladies and gentlemen phrasing but yes uh i'm on board i bet you and are. i'm gonna stay on board <laughs> until you do something that forces me to depart the train let's put it that way That's it's up to you said. wording <laughs> only you can prevent forest fires only you can get me off all right what's next <laughs> Well, CCTV says, call me crazy, but I think I saw uh, some clips from the 90s Spider-Man animated series in the new Marvel animation logo. If X-Men 97 is successful, do you think we could see shows like Spider-Man be revived too? No, I don't think so. I, I, it, <sighs> the original <laughs> X-Men animated series was far more, far more... Uh, ingrained in people than that spider-man one which was. that was great but yeah i know a lot of people who yeah. never even saw the spider-man one but I almost did, everybody yeah. i know watched that x-men one so no if this one worked i don't think it necessarily would lead to that at all to be honest with you i mean and listen i have nothing saying that it won't i could be totally wrong but it also makes sense that but, it's in there because they own the they they own it i mean so you can see they it can on do Disney the animation Plus. yeah so it's there all right Let's take uh, two more. What's All right. next? All right. Mary Vincent says, uh, I know you got you don't address rumors. Uh, rumors? 
I love rumors. But <laughs> what do you guys think of the rumors of Ryan Gosling joining the MCU? Didn't cross my mind that this could be uh, his next move, especially after the year he's had. Look, uh, all all I ever I care he likes about to make a lot of money. is are you casting good performers? That's all I ever care about. Ryan Gosling is one of our generation's best. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not Leo, he's definitely not Timothy, but he's a great actor. And he's got draw, and he's got star power, and he's got charm, he's got all of it. So, like, yeah, if you if you just tell me an actor with that kind of charm and that kind of talent might join the MCU, well, that's a good thing. Um, but, I mean, we'll see if he actually does it or not. Um, but listen, this is not a guy who's, like, really um, snobby about the roles he takes. He's... He was just in Barbie. He's about to be in the Fall Guy, right? So he can do a Blade Runner 2049, and then he can do Fall Guy. So yeah, this is an actor who could totally do MCU. But again, I'm not going to get freaked out because it's the possibility of him joining. Like, every actor right now is a possibility they can enter an MCU project. But uh, if they announced it tomorrow, I'd be certainly thrilled with it. They might need every actor right now. They might need every actor out there the way they're going. All right, last question of the day. What's next? Uh, Mr. Max Moore says, when do you think or hope they'll announce the new release date for Beyond the Spider-Verse? Uh, I feel like it's been ages since we heard any updates on the project. Doesn't seem to be, uh, CinemaCon as Sony is skipping it. Yeah. We'll yeah. It's probably not going to be at CinemaCon. They gave us, um, a really big across the Spider-Verse presentation in years past. Uh, and they, they talked a bit about the third film. So I honestly don't know. It, it, it all depends on how far behind they are. They obviously had a big, uh, they had some drama with it, which we discussed on the show previously. So I, I really don't know. What I do know is that they've been working their asses off on it and, and trying to get it pulled together. But I'll just say this. I'm going to hope that by Comic-Con, I think by Comic-Con, we are going to get some solid, definitive news. Uh, I don't expect by CinemaCon, again, because we're not expecting to see Sony there, but I expect by Comic-Con. Comic-Con will get some big, definitive news. That's my guess. All right, guys. And that'll do it for today's installment of the John Campy Show podcast. Thank you so much for being here and making this little show part of your day. Big special thank you to all you guys, both our YouTube channel members and those of you who use Super Chat to send in those questions. Number one, because you gave us fun things to talk about. But number two, you supported this channel as you did it and all of us involved with the show. Thank you guys so very much for your support. I want to thank the people in the room with me, Ray Aura. See you tomorrow. Jonathan Voiko. See ya. My name's John Campia. Thanks a lot for being here, guys. And until next time, my friends, OnlyFans. <laughs>